Hello everyone, today we're having another cybersecurity interview vlog with Chris Fair, the president of Oil Field Data. Um, hello Chris, uh, Hi. Yes, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your company, uh, what it does and yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> sure thing. Um, I'm Chris Fair with Oil Field Data. Uh, we're an oil and gas consulting firm who uh, specializes in real-time reservoir and production engineering surveillance. Um, started in 2005 and been running through a downturn or two since then. Um, our main focus as far as data and cybersecurity comes with accessing data from our clients and then returning that data to them, whether that's done through our systems or done through uh, their database or through the cloud. I would really begin to learn about how, what do you think about cybersecurity and what does it mean for you and for the industry you're in? Like, what do you think about it? Well, it's obviously when you deal with data that has value, then it's obviously going to be a target to someone who can use that as leverage to extract money from you, to, you know, the various you know, the other, other threats that are there not just getting access to your system, but, but then you know, potentially holding your system hostage. Yeah, that's true. And uh, do you think it is very often that now oil and gas industry is getting those hackers? And is it common nowadays? Do you hear it a lot? Well, you, you've got, well, we, we had one client that uh, actually did get hacked and lost all of their data for the last two or three years. What did they do? Uh, I think it was one of the, uh, employees clicked on an email with the malware link and right. off it went. That's right. So I think that one of the good solutions for that is training your employees and uh, making this um, like a culture, like a cybersecurity culture in the company, inside the company in order to um, make employees think before they click on any link. Do you think it will help uh, prevent it from being hacked? Do you think it prevents companies from being hacked and stuff like that? That in and of itself can help, but it doesn't do everything because there are a, a lot of links that come in where people have gone through trouble to make it look like it's from a professional. Uh, so as we, as I mentioned that these attacks, uh, they actually really increased in the last two, three years. And I've even read this uh, recently, this research from by Deloitte, that the attacks in uh, petroleum industry have increased much. And uh, one of them just happened recently in the end of December 2018 on Saipem and their servers in Asia and in Africa were really affected. They were actually hacked. And um, this, and I believe the fall, uh, there are many other following uh, with those kind of attacks. So taking this into consideration, what do you think should companies do in order to prevent these kind of attacks overseas? Because the company has a presence here, but has its servers all around the world. What do you think would be a good solution? Or maybe you have it. Well, I, I think that a large part of the industry is, is going to secure cloud service. To, and, and that does two things. It gets rid of the data room or the, the, the data centers, which saves some money for you know, the rent and the computers themselves. Sure. And so then you're basically dealing with large companies who are very interested and very good at security. Yeah. And then you're limiting your exposure to internal problems. I mean, you might have some one employee, <clears throat> you know, click on, a, on the wrong link that <clears throat> tears up their computer, but it doesn't affect the system. Yeah. And do you think companies uh, like petroleum companies should invest more in cybersecurity? Uh, just because I read also recently this research that oil and gas companies invest really tiny amount of um, money into cybersecurity just because probably they weren't that much affected by it. That's maybe the main reason of them not investing that much money into it. But do you think they should? As it well, I, I don't. It, it, it's, it depends on the company. Okay. Yeah, so most of the, the majors have 
pretty stringent requirements as far as accessing their systems or even sending them emails. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's more this, the mid-sized and smaller companies where because it hasn't happened to them or to someone they know. IT infrastructure with sufficient data, um, data separation uh, could help um, company prevent the attack uh, attacks from hackers and once it's not separated properly then hackers can get access to a whole lot of data and you know just have it all uh, is it common that companies like yours and just petroleum companies separating their data or it's not the practice that is very common nowadays well it, it some companies are, it depends on where the company is in their IT evolution. So if a company is still keeping things on an internal database uh, or just a, a local server, then that makes it more susceptible if it's networked up to being hacked mm -hmm. and or being or, or suffering any malware problems if someone in the system you know, clicks on the wrong email link. Um, other companies are quite stringent and do maintain their own data centers and have very high security. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are transitioning to the cloud, you know, the Chevrons and Statoils of the world. And <clears throat> so that then does two things. That makes security technically the service provider's responsibility. Okay. But you still have IT things going on internally with the company. And it it basically removes the some of the risk of cross infection with other computers because supposedly you know the Googles or the Amazons of the world will be pretty good about maintaining you know virus free environments on their systems. Yeah. And then you know the, the fact that you have a server and the fact that you have a tax statement that just makes you a target for anyone that's got free time or government support and the ability to try to extract money from you. Yes, thank you. And I heard that you've had this interview. Um, I wanted to ask about this interview from this booklet that you have. So when we first started out, we were primarily doing this on a, we, we were sent data by the operator or we were able to VPN to their system and mm -hmm. get the data ourselves. We then processed that data and then sent it back to them, okay. along with the results and an explanation of what was going on. Um, as the systems have evolved, uh, and, and actually our preference these days, is that we install our so so software service, which is a Windows service, inside their firewall on their physical server if they want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Or if they're already on the cloud, then we wake up over the cloud. Okay. And the, the article was really about kind of our journey through the world of IT being service providers that require, that need IT to at least give us permissions to do the things that we need to do in order to provide the service to the client. Mm -hmm. And you know, anywhere from a stereotypical situation where the IT uh, and the data exist just for the sake of having data existing that no one can access, yeah. several companies actually behave that way to where the data is maybe too loosely uh, you know, not, not controlled stri strictly enough and mm -hmm. it can get out. Yes. So <clears throat> you have different IT cultures at different companies and that article is really about how we've dealt with the kind of the range of opportunities that we've had over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. uh, how damageable, like the level of damage, what is it if company loses, a petroleum company loses data. Like how important is the data and what can happen to the company if the data leakage, leakage happens? Well, if it, if it leaks to say, but, but they still have it, that's usually fairly minimal because most of the data that they have is, is required to be reported to the government anyway in you know, monthly production numbers yeah. and You pressures. mean like if they have it like backed up, you mean? Right, so, okay. if, 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 so if someone just gets the, gets access to it and, and gets a copy of it, it it's a problem, but it, it's a survivable problem mm -hmm. because most of the, of the information that they would get is not really going to affect the, the outcome. Mm -hmm. you know, there are some 
pieces of proprietary processing that may have been done that could give someone a competitive advantage when it comes to the next leasing round mm -hmm. or get access to someone's exploration work. But it's not likely to happen with another competitor in the same area. So mm -hmm. it's like Chevron wouldn't hack into Exxon to try to get their stuff. Okay. Okay. And then the value of it outside of an oper operating oil and gas company is pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. So that, that's probably getting back to your earlier question, probably why the cybersecurity spending isn't that serious because well, who's going to take it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what if you don't have backups? That one, What's then? Like if um, the data is not backed up? Well, then you're probably going to be in trouble for the short. You know, well, you probably would be okay for the short term because most things don't change quickly. Mm -hmm. What if data gets encrypted or modified? Like there's a data and some of the things just numbers were a bit changed. What then? What can happen then? Then you have to ask if someone that used to work for Shell has been there. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're really good at modifying the data to make it look better than it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And right. There's really not a whole lot of benefit to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, there, there are a lot of the calculations that are done. Um, you know, once someone's through freshman year in college, they can do them. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, if you know how much money, how much oil or gas you've produced, you know, how much pressure change you've had, you see how much water cut you had, pretty much can get, you know, within a pretty, you know, 50% of the answer, mm -hmm. which is usually close enough to kind of know what to do. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, so your, your view on the cybersecurity is that it's important if I understood correctly, but um, people don't don't spend that much money on it in uh, your industry because it is not that fatal if something, if any breach happens, right? Yeah, well, oil and gas wells don't get shut in because you lose data. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Why do they get shut, shut down? Like, well, they, they would get shut down if they aren't economic any longer. Mm -hmm. Or if you need to do a diagnosis on, on there's any way to improve the performance of the well. Mm -hmm. But... Have, have the data is jointly gathered so you know what's happened, mm -hmm. and a lot of that's for re regulatory and other reporting, accounting, and you know, how you get paid. Yeah, but that's usually done by multiple parties, mm -hmm. so it's not going to be critical if it, if it happens. Okay, I mean, it'd be a pain in the ass, but it wouldn't. You know, <laughs> it doesn't stop you from continuing to make money. Yeah. Understood. And once you're paid for it, you don't care about it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So there's about a month or two window that, that would actually matter. Mm -hmm. And okay. it could probably be reconstructed. Yeah. Um, the things that could be a problem, and that's especially with all this interconnectivity and you know, the IoT business, is that there are systems that allow for remote control of wells and facilities. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone gets in and hacks into that, and starts fiddling around with things, now you've got not only a, a financial problem, but you've got potentially a personnel problem because things can blow up. Yeah. So, blow up, you mean literally? Oh, yeah. Go boom. Wow. How do you, how can you prevent it? Like for that's, someone... that's where you really need to make sure that, that no one gets inside the firewall. Yeah. And no one, no one outside. And, and it's also just, it's you have to have very strict permissions on who can do what. Um, that's really one of the things that I've heard talked about the last several years at these data-driven conferences that we go to. So basically you need to check access very often in order to make sure that no one from outside or no one who is not permitted to have access. Or you set it up to where no one can, no one can actually, you know, there, there, there must be several levels of security before any actual action takes place. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, the monitoring of like such thing would uh, resolve the problem? Monitoring of the software or of the access, or someone just checking if it's, you know, if it wasn't changed in any way? Because there are some insider, uh, you know, th thread makers who could change it for you. Do you think it it would help if someone would monitor it very often? Well, I think the folks who have that ability do monitor it pretty stringently it's it's a i mean it, it it's a really big deal if something went wrong mm -hmm. got it you know and, and it could be something minor that someone said well i'm gonna you know play with this and see what happens and you hit, hit a command code that happens shut in a well mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay, well then the company loses money because yeah. the wells aren't on production. Someone will probably find out pretty quickly and you know, what the hell's going on. But say they hit the wrong series of keys or commands or they actually know what they're doing. All right, well, let's close, you know, let's remove the safety protocol for this valve and let's remove the safety mm. protocol for this valve and let's control, change the control system. And then you build up pressure in where it shouldn't build up and boom. So that's, that's really, dangerous. that's why it's really important on for, for not only personnel threats, but cybersecurity of someone hacking in and doing things like that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Maybe you want to say something from yourself, like to the audience and to, you know, wh- whoever will watch it. <laughs> yeah, like a message from you. <laughs> um, if you have oil and gas wells and want to know what they're doing, give us a call. <laughs> you, you promised some self-promotion, so there we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. That's about thank it. you so much. All right. Thank you. All right, cheers. That was a great pleasure. <laughs>